This is the Ridiculously Amazing Insurance Agent Podcast, hosted by me, Kelly Donna Yupiro. This show is for growing insurance agencies looking to maximize their biggest investment, their people. Listen to the top agency performance partners clients share their story on how they boosted their performance by executing a plan. Let's head to the show. Well, everyone, this is an exciting day because we have a special guest and we're changing it up a little bit, but keeping it in the same realm of helping agencies, growing agencies with people. And we're really diving deep into time management because we're launching and actually relaunching our time management course, which you can get on our online school. Um, You can get as part of our agency performance program, or we have special options where we could kind of segment it off and have me be the coach for the program. But it's really important that every agency embraces their management system. It's the mothership, it's central command, it's air traffic control. And so many agencies struggle to understand it, keep up to date, maximize the features of the system. And I get it. You learn the system gets onboarded and there's still a lot to learn and feel comfortable about. But the best agencies that we work with embrace it as an ongoing part of their agency. They have to dedicate time towards it. And that's why I'm so grateful to have Stephen Harrington, the diva of insurance on today to talk a little bit about Hawksoft and some of the time management saving tips that they use at Cross Insurance. You may have heard Stephen on a podcast that we did a few weeks ago, um, as Cross Insurance has done almost all of our programs. So he knows how we work, and he's really been able to manipulate Hawksoft to help his team and empower them to be efficient and effective. So in this podcast, we talk all about some of the features of of Hawksoft and how it can really help you as a leader manage your team and balance workloads. We are also putting this in our new course. So if later on you wanna go back to it, our new course will also feature this podcast in it so that you will forever and ever and ever be able to see Steven in his time management tips. And he's actually been writing um, a little bit of a how-to guide for Hawksoft users that will be included as a PDF in the course. But here's what we need to embrace before we get here. This, This podcast, this video is really for agency leaders, because we talk a lot about setup, holding people accountable, and all the things that are going to make the agency more efficient. Definitely, the staff is welcome to to listen to it. However, I just want to be clear that a lot of the admin setup things need to be done by the administrator of Hawksoft. So if you're getting a little confused, just note that and maybe talk to your administrative, um, the person who's in charge of Hawksoft. Well, I'm done talking. Let's get Stephen Harrington on so we can learn the best practices of using Hawksoft to make our team efficient and effective. Well, hello, everybody. I am happy to change up our podcast a little bit in alignment with our time management uh, online course launch here. So I have the one, the only, the diva of insurance with us here today who is looking awful diva-y today. How are you doing this morning, Stephen? I'm doing well. well. Yeah, good. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so for those of you who don't know Stephen Harrington, if you're a Hawksoft user, you probably have heard the name. Um, I know there hasn't been many Hawksoft meetings lately due to COVID, but we are all here together. He is a Hawksoft expert and officially, what is your title at Cross Insurance these days? I'm the I'm Chief, Chief Operations, Operations Officer. Officer. You're the coup. The coup. <laughs> He's the coup. I'm the coup. So we have the coup, and he owns his own Hawksoft training consulting firm. So, Stephen, would you like to, you know, tell us all a little bit about how you help agencies with Hawksoft? Absolutely. So I have been in management for almost 20 years now. Lots of different things: retail, bartending, restaurants, insurance. You know, just all kinds of fun adventures here. So we, uh, through that, I've seen a lot of different changes in the marketplace and things always going on. And the key that always kept me moving on and helped helped me help others move on was education. Sure. You can't move forward if you don't know what's happening. You got to stay educated. <laughs> and things happen so fast now too. Absolutely. So what I did is there was a lot of agents struggling with Hawks after the use of some of the technology. And I found that It was a good fit that complemented my other job of managing an insurance agency to be able to also help those agents expand their knowledge or use of the system and better benefit with their time and energy and know what they had in the system versus just guessing. 
Awesome. And so for those of you who have worked with us in the past and on a Hawksoft, you may have seen Stephen Harrington's guides on how to run our renewal review calls, how to track sales. Um, he was also on a podcast with the owners of the agency, Stephen and Celia Cross. Um, so you, he's been he's been a little fixture in our world and happy to have Cross Insurance as a client as well. But as we were going through and saying, hey, we're going to redo, clean up, change up, modernize time management because with COVID, you know, agencies have changed so much um, and time management is a key. I thought it'd be really great to have Steven on to talk specifically to Hawksoft users and how you can use Hawksoft to save your agency time. Um, so Steven, I thought I'd start off just a little bit um, with email, right? Okay. So obviously we've talked about it a lot. One of the hardest things I think with insurance day is people never were taught how to manage their email and more and more clients are using it, especially in commercial, more in personal lines. And what we find is everybody's using email differently, right? So absolutely, we all believe here on this podcast, me and Steven, that, hey, if it's not in Hawksoft, it didn't exist, right? It doesn't I matter that, that it was in my notes. If it's not there, it didn't happen. It happened. You know, it's kind of, it's like, you know, you don't get to say like, oh, I wrote it here or I didn't log it. So I'm curious, in Hawksoft, Stephen, what are some strategies, tips that you see to help people be more efficient with, you know, attaching emails, using email? And I want to say, first of all, that this is one of those things that I see a lot of agencies um, like, oh, all these emails, but it takes so long to attach, you know, like I just, I know I've got to spend a half a day attaching email. I'm like, what? <laughs> so think, tell me a little bit about how Hawksoft helps us be more efficient with email. I think one of the things that you talk about in time management is that the two minute rule, if it takes two minutes, just do it. If it takes more than two minutes, attach it or, you know, do it with suspend it for when you're going to do it. Because we sit there and we stare at emails all day long and we're like, oh, that's going to take 20 minutes. Oh, that's going to take 15 minutes. And then we think about it for five minutes and still don't do anything. So what I really encourage people to do is open their email a couple times a day in the morning. Wait, wait, wait. You lunch. don't have to have your email open all day. What? It's kind of like a voicemail, <laughs> right? They're not expecting an instant response. They want a response, but they know it might be a little while. So or we're like email junkie addicts and we have to play the email tread, you know, game and that's what trips us up. <laughs> yes. And I can tell on days where I'm really not effective and I don't want to work that literally I'm constantly refreshing my email like has something else come in yet has something else come in yet <laughs> trying to distract Ooh, yourself from what really needs to be done <laughs> but I think that if you get in the habit of doing it checking it a couple times a day I always take it and attach it to Hawksoft before I respond because otherwise I'm going to have to attach the original email then the follow-up email and create a log note and it just becomes really messy so if you attach it to Hawksoft first you can create a log note and suspend it with a priority and a category. So is it a binder change? Is it a binder request? Is it a voicemail? Maybe you get digital voicemails. You know, what is it? And prioritize it in your box. Is it really important that it happens within the next hour or can it wait towards the end of the day? Or is it something that just needs to be done in the next two to three days? So I think if you really get in the habit of making the suspenses your workflow, not your email your workflow, that that's where you're going to really get some bang for your buck with Hawksoft and getting out of the trap of email. So tell me, because I know, again, coming in and producers especially kind of struggle with this, like mm -hmm. they love working out of their email because it's communication with the way that they make money. I get that, right? How long does it take to attach an email in Hawksoft? Like, can we just have the honest conversation? Because some people will tell me like hours they have to spend attaching. I'm like, no. <laughs> Um, we get hundreds of emails a day in our general email box and the CSR team. I mean, we have one person that normally does the box and they're just like, boom, boom, boom. They're making any decision other than what category it is and where it needs to go awesome. and assigning it. So it's kind of the same theory. You, if you get out of the mindset of working in your email and start working out of your suspenses, you're literally just taking the voicemails and logging them in. It's just the same with an email. You're just logging it in to deal with it when it needs to be dealt with. So and is it drag and drop in Hawksoft? Tell, um, our, tell our listeners more. It, it's going to kind of depend on what email system you're using. If you're using Outlook, a lot of them are drag and drop. 
I think with Gmail or the G Suite, it's a little clunkier, but um, still can be done. I think it's more of a uh, send it to the file for G Suite. I mean, I do highly recommend Outlook. I know it costs money and people are like, I don't want to pay $20 a month for users. Hey, so does Gmail. <laughs> but but I'm just saying, like, it's worth the, the beauty of drag and drop is worth the, worth the bang for the buck. No doubt. No doubt. So, you know, one of the things we talk about with email is you really should be at zero by Friday, no more than 10 in your inbox. So what Steven's saying is by putting it in the system, the system will help prioritize you what you need to be doing next. So you're not in the email ping pong trap game of back and forth and this and that. And then what I'm hearing from you, Steven, is the beauty of that two minute rule a little bit is that hey, as we go through that, then if your child is sick or you get sick or you win the lottery at lunch because it's all in there, or maybe you're just at lunch and a client calls back, someone can see that open task. They call in, get the VIN number, whatever they have to do and close it and move on. Is that pretty, is that how you guys are running across? Absolutely. Yeah. If it's not in hot sauce, nobody knows what happens. I mean, most of us are working from home. We can't just go run over and check somebody's desk. Right. Or no, or no. <laughs> we, can't, we can't dig through the, yeah, the, the sheets of paper and the sticky notes and try to find what we're looking for, you know, and we don't necessarily have access to everybody's email. So again, it's really important to get the information into the system so that others can help. I mean, that's part of being a team is you're going to process a change for someone else. They're going to do it for you. Awesome. So let's now talk about like the two minute rule. So we got all our email in there because as we work through time management, we always start with email just because it's such a bottleneck for people. Then we go into, okay, Cal, this is what I get all the time. Cal, well, great. My email's not there, but I have a bajillion suspenses now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'd love to hear from your perspective, working with other agencies. I know what I've seen. I've seen the hundreds of pages of overdue, like no one's looked at it, like, like the funky thing growing in the, you know, in the fridge, like in the back, and it's like, who's yeah. going to touch it? Um, I've seen people who run them really well. I've seen people who just, my, one of my favorites is Kelly, we can never be up to date on our suspenses. And I'm always like, well, with that attitude, you absolutely are right. You will never be up to date on right? your suspenses. So I know you mentioned categories and priorities. Talk to us a little bit about the best practices of using the suspenses to really manage your day in an agency. So one of the great features Hot Sauce came out with a couple of years ago is called suspense categories. You can go into your settings and create any word you want <laughs> as a suspense category. So I think we have about 20 of them right now. We had more and found it to be overwhelming to try to pick what category it should fit into. So we kind of pared it down, but we have like, it says it's a star, star, urgent, star, star. Like, I mean, that's red hot on fire needs to be dealt with right away. Jazz like, hands. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and then we have, you know, binder request. We have, you know, quote follow up. We have a lot of different categories. So when the agents are coming in in the morning and or at the end of the day, they can look at their box and their suspenses and they see right in order what's there. I mean, I, I work with a lot of agencies that don't use the suspense categories and they go in and look at all the agent suspenses and I'm like, there's 47 suspenses that are past due. And the owners are like, well, okay, what are they? I'm like, do you want to pay me to look at all 47 of them and read them to tell you what they are? Or should we maybe talk about suspense categories? Because we can then batch or look at, you know, these are all voicemails that need to be returned. This is, you know, an auto change. An auto change is not the end of the world. It can wait till the end of the day or when you get five minutes. It's not a priority item. It needs to happen, but it's not it's not as hot as a brand new quote that came in that's sitting there waiting to be done. Well, what I love about that too, is if I'm sitting there and I've got 47 open activities, they all don't take the same amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. So say it's 10 minutes to my lunch break. Well, I can jam out my 10 of my follow-ups, right? I'm just going to like bang them out before lunch and I can grab those and go. Or I'm looking at like remark. Well, I know that's going to take some time. (laughs) And so I can kind of say like, based on what I have going on for the day, I have 15 minutes. What's the best use? Let me just get all those squared away. Is that pretty fair about, it, you know, how, how you're operating? It is very fair. The other thing too, is some of the easier tasks, like you're on hold for underwriting for 20 minutes. Like mm-hmm. it's that never ending hold. You need something from the carrier and it's just, you're waiting and waiting. 
it's a two minute task. I mean, just process it. Well, you can process other things while you're on hold. You don't have to sit there patient and silent. Just they're going to answer any minute. They're going to answer any minute. They're going to answer any minute. I mean, and so you can, if, if it's a quick something, just bust it out while you're waiting for something else to happen. I think it is also good for owners then to be able to take a quick glance at like, well, how many remarkets do we have in the pipeline? Mm -hmm. You know, where, what do we have going on for the day? And then looking at somebody being like, sweet pea, you're going to be in a problem today. Like, <laughs> I'm just looking at your to-do. Somebody right. didn't, you know, one of the things we see is some people are stressed out. I can't get to everything, but we weren't smart when we were trying to schedule our delivery of ah. things, right? It's just... I'll remark, I just listened to some phone calls this morning for an agency, Renewal Reviews, which I know Cross has done, and literally eight phone calls. Every single phone call, the account manager said, I'm going to remark at you. Client didn't ask, didn't even mention the price sometimes. It went up, so I'm gonna, I'll get back to the remark. I was like, oh, that's not in my script. And right? I was looking at their remarketing numbers. They're tracking high. I'm like, well, now I know. So as an agency owner, that would give you some transparency as well to see where do we need to train people, right? Absolutely. And, and it kind of goes along with the renewal review program as well. They were getting stressed because they never knew how many, how many renewal reviews they were going to have every day. But they were all category, they were categorized as a review call. And so we moved those all to Mondays. We just batched them and all their reviews for the week come in on Monday. And so when they come in on Monday, they have 50 suspenses that all say renewal review. But now, and at first they were like, <gasps> and I'm like, you were still getting that amount. It was just a surprise every day as to how many you were going to have. You could have 14 one day, two the next, at least now you know. So now they take it and they're like, if in four days I have to do this many, I need to do X amount per day of account reviews. And they just try to get it done. Right. Or they try to get it, I mean, they want it done by Thursday. So Friday is kind of a, easy breezy day for them of you know less calls and less stress margaritas and tacos at lunch <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes i also like my team leads also go in and they'll look and see if somebody has nine quotes and it's all new business we're going to try to get the sales team or somebody else that at least help get the quotes done yeah not absolutely. necessarily reach back out to the client and sell it but be like hey you know the csr has got a little bit of time and she knows how to do the renewal reviews quotes for a remarket, let's just have her do it. Well, and let's talk a little bit, you know, I want to save that, save that topic about teamwork for a minute too, because I think what we're talking about goes into asking for help, which is a big component in insurance. We just don't do it. Like the superhero, cape there, I'd rather cry at my desk than ask right. for help. <laughs> but I think so much of it is because it's in my notepad and I hear all the time, I have to explain it to somebody. I'm like, well, then the system's broken. Because if we're using the system correctly, there should be no explanation. I should just be able to say, Stephen, I could really use your help with these two reshops. And Stephen, there should be no communication other than assigning that suspense to somebody else. Would you Absolutely. say that that's the, that's the dream goal of time management, right? Well, and I think part of it too is setting a realistic expectation with the customer. Mm -hmm. Not what your fantasy is. Like, I know this quote's not going to get done today. I'm not going to tell the customer I'm going to call them today. So I'm going to suspend it for tomorrow or the next day when the quote actually needs to get done. And, and that's going to help. It's, it's easier to work ahead. Like, I can go, if I get all my stuff done today, I can work ahead. What? That's a crazy concept. But you it's can harder be for me to get insurance, Stephen. Didn't you know but that? It's hard to get caught up <laughs> once I'm behind. <laughs> Well, and I, I, it, work doesn't hit everybody at the same time frame, right? Like right. if we're working together, I may be having a crazy day. You may be having a fine day. If it's all in Hawksoft with the right codes, uh, it can be re easily reassigned to somebody else so that that way we truly can work like a team. Mm -hmm. But I, agencies tell me that we, are, we work like a great team. And then I look, I can't ask for help. I can't go on DND. I'm like, well, that's literally the definition of not being a team. <laughs> like, right, it's right. not, we always say it's not, a, it's, it's a sign of courage to ask for help. It's, it's not a sign that you're doing something wrong. If we're doing this right, we're growing an agency, everybody should be asking for help once a week or once a month at least. Um, and so that's why what we're talking about here, everybody, Stephen sharing with you about categories and suspense priorities, when that's in there, you as managers can be air traffic controllers and redistribute work 
on your terms, not when it's the explosive volcanic, I can't do any more. Because what or happens somebody's is- somebody's sick and they're out for a week magically and unexpectedly. I mean, somebody can jump in and see what's there. Absolutely. So let's move on to notepads, right? So I have a huge issue with notepads and agencies. I'm like, I, I have habit. a note. I have a notepad next to me right now and it's giving me cringes. And the only reason is I'm traveling and I, I try to not, when I'm at an agency, not be electronically connected because I get distracted easily, but I'm like, this thing's, uh, I got to get it out of there and into some place. But especially with COVID, like what are you seeing, right? The notepad thing in an agency is really hard to break. Oh. I think I actually might've sent someone to the hospital one day after telling them we're getting rid of notepads. She had a heart attack that night. Not my it's finest fun, moment. It's a fun game to play to go take all the paper off somebody's desk and out of their drawer. And then the next day they can't do any of their changes because it was all hidden somewhere under their keyboard or something. Tell me a little bit about though, like someone calls in because the pushback is I like to write it down. I can write down the right. VIN number. I can go back to it. So in a Love perfect it. world in Hawks Off, someone calls in with a service request or something you can't do first call resolution, which we're going to talk about in a second. But you don't have all the information. Let's just, that's a, probably a good example. So right of, How should we be doing that in Hawksoft? Right at the top of the command bar in Hawksoft is a thing called Scratchpad. Mm -hmm. It's just like the little note pop-up that comes up on your desktop. The Scratchpad you can open, it's got a date timestamp. So you can literally click date time. So it puts the date and time. You type any notes you want. So as the client's talking, you're just typing away, typing your notes. And it can be open while the client's open as well. So what? Nice. So we're not have to create the log note yet because we don't necessarily know what they want, but we can start typing as they're talking. Then it's got this amazing feature that says copy all, and it just copies the whole block of whatever you've typed in, and you can paste it right into your log note. Sweet. <laughs> or if it's back-to-back -back calls and your life is chaos, you can date and timestamp multiple things and just keep the note going, then copy section by section and put them into the correct log note. So you're saying ditch the paper, save the trees, use the scratch pad that will help everybody work more efficiently and effectively. Now, can other people see the scratch pad? Like say, no. so that's a challenge, right? A little bit it right is. there. It but, is. but it'd be no different than if the scratch pad was sitting on their desk. But then if I can say something to everybody, if you're getting back-to-back -back phone calls, it's okay to talk to your leader and say, can I get five minutes D&D &D to put these notes in? I'm going to tell you guys this, almost no agency leader is going to be like, no, we don't want your notes in the system. You better get on that phone. Five minutes copy and paste what Steven's talking about is not hours. It's all right there. It should be copy, paste and go 30 seconds max, right? Absolutely. So, I did also, um, I'm horrible with notes. I love sticky notes. I love shiny papers. I love colorful paper. I like little things until they get lost in my car or between offices. Sticky so notes are not that sticky. I, I know, I know. And so I did take your advice as well. And I got this like little rocket book is what it's mm -hmm. called. So there's only so many pages in it. And then you have to wipe it all off and start all over hard. again before you can write any more notes. That's my, my iPad with Evernote. I just like it's in there and I can doodle and sometimes I need to brainstorm, but I don't want it to be on paper. I need it to be saved someplace safer than paper. Right. <laughs> so someplace super safer. That's where all the brilliance happens. Right. And, and I'm not saying that I use this for client information. Client information goes directly into the system. This is for, for like management, management tasks yeah. or, you know, notes about a meeting, that sort of thing. I hear you. Um, so next one is different with COVID, right? So you know, not everybody's working in the office. And this was like one of those like smack you across the face moments. Like, oh my gosh, I have so much paper at my desk. Now I'm working from home. The physical file and the printing and the, the safety net of all this paper. I have to touch it and feel it and love on it. So I can shred it and scan it and attach it and all have happy feet around the office. But, you know, there's two things on desk organization I want to talk to you about. The first one is a more uncommercial line. So you walk into a commercial account manager's office and there's the stack of folders. I'm always like, what's that? Those are policies that have to be delivered. I'm like, oh, cool. And I take like the first one and it's like October, 2020. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, what are, what are we, what are we going to be, 
how are we gonna are we gonna really go and give this guy his policy six months later when like what well, like well he wants it but I just haven't had time I'm like that's a real bad look right <laughs> If so, he wanted it that bad, he was kind of expecting it probably prior to October. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit like desk organization. I'm curious because I just got this question recently. Um, you know, I am not a fan of delivering policies unless it's a mega large account and they've requested it. I am a believer of electronically sending the policy. Mm -hmm. People can hit control F and find. And using that time to do renewal review calls up front versus delivering this policy and then being like, oh, here's all the updates, you know? How do you see Hawksoft working as far as like policy delivery, some things along the, that nature? Because sometimes people say, it takes so long to scan these policies in. Um, well, first of all, most of them you can get an electronic copy of if you request it from the carrier or the MGA. They, mm -hmm. The MGA does not keep paper files. They have an electronic copy of that policy somewhere and they can email you the PDF and you can attach it to the file. Or if that's not an option, yes, it takes five minutes to scan, scan a 40 page document in front and back. And then it takes you two seconds to right click, send email in Hawksoft, attach the document and send it off. So one of the things that was a struggle, we have one agent that loves paper and we have one agent that hates paper and it's the commercial department. And it was like a constant battle of, I'm like, why do you never mail anything? And why is your postage meter always out of postage? And it ended up being that we turned into our renewal reviews. We now ask the question, is it okay if we send you the electronic copy of your document? 99% of the clients are like, absolutely. You send that paper and I just, it just goes in a drawer or it gets shredded. Right. And then I call you if I need the information again. Right. So at least with the email, they're either filing it on their computer or just leaving it in their email for them to <laughs> find right. the just policy to resort later. back to. I have it right here if I need right. something. And, and if it's a paper copy of the policy and it's not scanned into the system and a claim or a loss happens and somebody else has to get into the file, we can't read the policy if it's not in there. So then the next one, like personal lines, right? Like I'll see like piles and I know we're in a different time frame, but when offices reopen, I've always been super nervous. I'm like, first of all, your desk should look clean and look impressive to a client coming in. Number two, you have sensitive information, you know, like I don't really want my social security and I'm laying around on your desk. Right. People say, oh, it's in a folder. I'm like, it's still laying around, you know, like it's not as safe and secure. Can you think of any paper and personal lines that an agent should be having on their desk? Like, is there anything that says, hey, Kelly, it can't go 100%, but you can um, go pretty close? Yes, I can think of a couple of things. They should have their call scripts on their desk. Ooh. <laughs> they should have their um, reasons to not reshop on their desk. <laughs> their hot stuff they, guide of how to have, have the hot code. Guide of <laughs> <laughs> the so more and how to training them. documentation than files. Absolutely. I mean, in some of those, we even laminate. We're like, we want you to have this on your desk. We want you we to want write you on to it. We want you to put your greasy fry fingers all over this and be able to wipe it off. <laughs> Absolutely. But the rest of the paper, no. There's, I mean, honestly, I can't think of a single reason that it needs to, to happen. If it comes in the mail, walk over and scan it in and then T-file it, it or, you know, shred it, whatever the agency procedure is. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. One and done. I mean, why are you going to take it to your desk, look at it, think about it, hold it, feel it, give it all your love and attention for 10 minutes, to then still have to get up, go scan it in, to then put it in the file, to then look at the file, and then you're like, oh, but I can't touch the screen. It's not as warm and fuzzy. So uh, let I have, an, I have one agency that is... Um, they're a little bit more traditional. I want to say that because they are, they're a great agency, just a little bit Absolutely. more traditional. And so in personal lines, they have been going to every carrier website, downloading the deck page to attach it to their system. Awesome. Yeah. I struggle with that because I run across a few agencies a year like this and they're very like, no, we need it. And I'm, I still, to this day, I'm like, but it's in the carrier website that you can easily get to most clients don't call in except for every three years. Why would we take those extra steps? So at cross insurance, do you do that at all? Or is it like, just go to the, no, 
No. If the customer calls and requests a copy of their policy, we either order it directly through the carrier website, and we just document our system that we ordered it from the carrier to be mailed out, because let's let them use their postage instead of ours. Or we we get it from the carrier, attach it to their file, and email it to them if we need to. But that's the only time we're going to have a, or if it doesn't download. I mean, if it's something that's Right, but it'll a manual come to process you in another way that you have to attach it. But, but we do it. not physically go and attach a copy of every deck page because <laughs> then every time a change is made, you have to do it. And I mean, and are you going it's in to check the somewhere else? It's made? not, you're not it's the only place to it. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if it's that big of a problem or if they really need it, you can always go to the carrier website and they normally keep five or seven or all the history from all mankind for the client for that policy. The only thing they don't keep, which I just want to be clear on, is when you're quoting someone, those quotes are typically only 30 days. So right. we do recommend as part of just normal process, if you quote somebody, attach that quote to the system so if you can't close them right there, or they don't buy, you can go back to it next year. Those do expire. Yes. But again, that should be part of your sales process is that quotes in there. So if somebody calls and you're at lunch, they can buy that freaking policy without you. Well, and I also like attaching the quotes, especially for the reshop customers, the habitual, like every three to six months, their insurance is too expensive. And if there's no log notes or we're not logging that we're doing all this work for the customer every time because, oh, it only took five minutes for me to run it through the multi-rater then nobody knows that this customer is the problem. Mm -hmm. Whereas if somebody's calling in I and they get to me, I'm like, dude, we've shopped your account every three months for the last year. Your, your rate is what your rate is. It's not gonna be that drastic of a change every three months. Maybe we're not the best fit for you. Totally. So one of the things that's always driving me nuts about being in the insurance space was that ever since I was 18, I heard the same thing. I'm so busy. And in over 20 years, no one's been able to solve that problem until now. I'm gonna help your agency move from busy to productive and find more time in your day to reduce stress and improve your client's experience. Because you see your team running around all day and they seem stressed and overwhelmed. Every day for years, you've been hearing how busy people are, just like I was. But the phone records and activities tell a different story some days. You aren't sure what to do. You don't want your team feeling this way, right? What almost no agency understands is how to move their team from busy to productive and find minutes that add up to hours in their day. It's not just focusing on more people, it's making the people you have more productive. This can all happen when your agency has a plan to manage time and training with the right approach. So if you're tired of hearing how busy what everyone is, but no one seems to have a plan, Except to hire more people. Do you ask how you can help your team and they just give you that stare? I don't know, I'm just so busy. Your agency needs a different approach that engages the team and gives them a clear plan with expectations. This helps the agency embrace a time management strategy that simplifies everything, empowers everything to everyone to succeed. This of course changes everything. So if you're sitting at team meetings with more questions and answers, and you're excited to bring new ideas to the agency, but it's always met with resistance. And the team is always saying how busy they are, but no one has a plan, including you, the leader. You may have something on your mind. And that's what we did. We had something on our mind and we created Apex Time Management. Apex Time Management is actually a six month program that I personally install into agencies, but it was time for a remodel. And part of that remodel is we're gonna be selling it for one time only for two weeks as a standalone course in our online university. So you can empower your team to do it directly, right away, right now. We of course included in our agency performance pack, which is a subscription for training. So if you want that and retention and sales and how to reduce remarketing, as well as new courses every quarter, we got you covered. But there's no sense in dilly-dallying. Let's go ahead and get to our website, agencyperformancepartners.com, where you can check out the new Apex Time Management Performance Pack. And while you're there, check out our shop. Well, it's going to hurt. We might just have other tips and tools. But I'm here to help you solve the problem of busy, move your team to productive, all with online training that is interactive and makes a big difference when applied. So who wants to get started? We're doing it at 20% off until the end of April, 2021. So get started, give us a call. We'd love to help you move from busy to productive. 
so let's talk now about first call resolution. My favorite thing. Um, and I think what I'm hearing more and more as agencies, oh, we do that. And I'm like, but you don't. <laughs> this is like when people are like, we're paperless, but you're not. You're you're partially paperless and you're partially first call resolutionists. Um, so tell me a little bit, like, again, just walk us through Hawk stuff. I call in, I want to do a vehicle change. How would you recommend an agent do that on first call resolution? Just walk the steps through when Hawksoft, when the carrier comes into play. Tell us how you recommend that. So what we normally do is we, and I say we, but we go, we open up the notepad, we can start typing our notes, then number all of the pertinent information. Uh, we then go open the carrier website and process the change directly in the carrier. Then we print screen the, the, the endorsement confirmation to the Hawksoft file. Because then they we, have to stand by that. Because <laughs> they have to stand by that. And then we just put in a basic note, like copy, paste, VIN number, coverages, wanted, whatever. And we put a note in there that just says, talk to Susan, here's what she wanted, here's the VIN, blah, 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 process with carrier. And we wait for the download to come in. So I love everything you said about that because for a couple of reasons. One, and guys, anything, taking a payment, do you know, adding a drive, like all of this can be done that same methodology that Steven just outlined. But one, I love the print screen. We've been talking about print screen for so long and people are like, oh, I, I should just check the download. I'm like, yes, you should. But print screen means that if it's not there, you go back to the company and now you're not getting into a fight with the company <laughs> and if it was there or not, you know, like a confirmation number, here you go. So the carrier is always correct, except for when you can prove they're not. Right. And, and it's just, it's a, it's a two second thing, right? Print screen, right. attach PDF. Good. I love, love, love that. The next thing I love is when you process it over the phone, Stephen, is I can tell you what your rate is going to be on that new vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that you're three months away from renewal. So let's talk about it at renewal. Or I can tell you, you know, your rate's going to go up $8 a month. And now it's not, oh, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to wait till they get the bill in the mail. And then they call me. Yeah. <laughs> So they the got other, their new car payment and their insurance rate. And guess who they're mad at? Not the car guy. <laughs> yeah. The other nice thing too is that if you're quoting it live with them on the phone and they have lower limits of liability or lower deductibles, you can play with those because you're already in the system making a change and make those recommendations right then and there. But Stephen, people are busy. They do not want to be on the phone with us. Mm, I tend to disagree. I think we totally. think that I think that we think they don't want to be on the phone with us, but if they didn't want to be on the phone with us, they wouldn't have called us. They would have used our online portal or sent us an email. Also, people have no idea. They're not like timing you. You've got three minutes and 13 seconds right. to do this vehicle change before I expire like a pumpkin. They don't know. They're just happy to get off their plate. The last thing yeah. they want to do is have to call you back and forth 10 times because you wrote the VIN number down wrong. Well, right? and the <laughs> and, and you can have small talk while you're working like, oh, what color vehicle did you, what color is it? And you're just typing along. And then they think that, I mean, yes, you're invested in all of your clients and you care about them deeply, but it's also helping build that relationship a little bit more when you're like, oh, what color is it? Oh, purple. That's crazy. You know, I rarely see a purple car. That'll really stand out. Drive by and honk next time you're in the area. No doubt. No doubt. And so I want to take that first call resolution one step further because something we didn't mention, but something I believe in, which is like the American Express, the Verizon model. Before I let you go from that vehicle change, I'm going to log that note in, that activity in, and just recap. All right, Stephen, just to recap, and I'm talking and typing because I should have a headset mm -hmm. that my multiple monitors, I'm going to talk about headsets in one second because I'm going to get on the soapbox, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just want to let you, so I switched out the Jetta for the new Toyota Camry, um, your new price is X, you know, your bill is going to be reflected in the next one. We're really excited for you. I've sent your auto ID cards and I'm typing as I go. Anything else I can help you with, Stephen? No. Okay, great. Have a wonderful day. I hit save. I hang up the phone and I am now fully prepared to take the next phone call. Well, and, and that was what the point I was going to bring up. If you take the time to do it with the customer while they're on the phone, you don't have to try to hope that the phone doesn't ring as soon as you hang up the phone to then get it logged in two hours later and remember what the client wanted. Right. So if I wrote it on my notepad, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> now I process it 
to leave an activity, to hope that the phone doesn't ring again. Right. And then I screw something up. So I have to call the client, like people, this is what we're talking about with time management. We are our own worst enemies so much. And so often because the way we're trying to do things is clunky and outdated, which leads me to the freaking headset conversation, because I might go off. I'm sorry. Agency owners, if you're one, if you don't have headsets for your team, hit pause, go on Amazon, call your IT person and get everybody a headset right this minute. Number one. Number two, if your team's like, I don't like wearing it. It's not comfortable. It doesn't look good with my hair. I want you to say it is not an option because doing this all day is also not good for you. And then the sound I terrible and you can't do this while I'm doing this okay so it you know what if you go work for American Express I'm pretty sure they're not like no problem you do what you want and honestly once people get used to it for 30 days like when people went to two three four monitors I had people say oh, I don't want two monitors I'm like give me seven give me right? seven monitors I have four and I'm like how can I get more but after a month or two they're like oh this is kind of nice yeah force them into it, you know? So I, and I, I can attest, I hated headsets. I thought they were obnoxious. That made my ear hurt. It always squished my hair. I mean, I was one of those true divas when it came, I'm like, I'm not wearing a headset. But yeah, I would go spend $40 on the, the rest for my headset to rest on my shoulders. I could be like, and then the <laughs> phone drops and you're like, oh, sorry, I dropped the phone. <laughs> Let me grab that again. And so like, I mean, I think Celia is the one that forced me. She's like, you just need to try it. Like, you're going to use it for two weeks and then come back and tell me you can't use it. And I was like, I'm not going to. She's like, you're going to. I was like, Look fine. at you now. <laughs> right? I was like, fine. So, I mean, I originally had the over-the-head one and literally that drove me insane. I, my hair would get caught in it. I would fidget with it. I would play with it. And I found I loved the in-the-ear one. I'm the rare one in the office. I think we have one other person out of 20 that likes the in the ear one versus the over the head. And now everybody has a headset and they love them. When we sent them home with cheap headsets when COVID first started, they were calling and complaining so they could come back to the office and get their nice headset. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it people, you, it's like you have to force change sometimes and it's so worth it. Everyone cannot operate independently and then complain how busy they are. You know, it's like, if you're not complaining how busy you are, do what you want, but you want to start telling me how busy you are, things are going to change. That's how we have to look at it. So next up is the over-servicing the least desirable accounts. So <laughs> ju I'll just go over what this looks like. We take our $700 annual auto policies and take walk-in payments 12 times a year at three hours a, month, a year. And then we take our pack $5,000 package and never call them because we don't have time. Mm -hmm. So just like, like there's a whole book of business that is undesirable and I advocate clients fire their bottom 10% of customers every year. Not everybody takes me up on the offer to invite them to find another agent. But when you free up the most needy customers and I mean, like needy and low premium, okay. Not needy and high premium, needy and low premium, Right. your payment issues, your service challenges, your claims. All that stuff goes away so you can work on your best clients. Nice mug, by the way. Oh. Love the Yeti. In case anyone would like it, shameless plug, they're on our store. <laughs> it so keeps how, my beverage cool and refreshing. How in Hawksoft could an agency identify the, 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 the lowest, least desirable accounts, in your opinion? Is there some easy ways that they could start gathering that data just to become accustomed to it? Um, I think so. I think one of the things you could do is literally run a list of low premium, like monoline clients or total premium by client and look at if it's a $200 account, is it a $125 renter's policy and that's all they have? And then you could start looking at them one by one and see if they just pay their bill and you never hear from them, great. Hands off. If they're calling because they move every six months and then they need to call in their payment, then it cancels for non-pay and then blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's time for them to move along or have a different conversation. Or cross sell them so that you make right. more money off of them. <laughs> so I think, I mean, also as clients are calling in, look at the log notes. 
I mean, it's that simple. Like if you see phone from insured payment, phone from insured payment, phone, and it's every month, you need to have the EFT conversation. You need to have the download the company's app conversation, or you're going to say, I really appreciate you calling us every month. I'm going to give you the number to the carrier's billing system, and I'm going to transfer you. And next month, you just need to call them directly to take care of that payment. I, I mean, absolutely. And I think one of the best things about Hawksoft and that a lot of other management systems don't have is each policy does have a billing type. Now, it doesn't download, but if you're doing renewal review calls, it's an easy thing to update so that you can run a list of who is not on EFT or pay in full and be like, absolutely. let's let's start a little project to get them <laughs> to not be calling in because not that we don't want to talk to our customers. I want to be very clear with people on that, right. but I want to level that conversation up, not from, I want to make a payment. That's a 12 minute call to, I want to talk to you about your coverage, Steven. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to think about like, Hey, how do I work in my pay grade? Not be something that we can automate on the flip side and have a better experience a lot of times. Right. I, I agree. So the least desirable accounts, I think, is something every agency needs to start looking at and identifying. Are we actually making money on some of these? Um, next what, up is, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, what we did with one of our producers is she serviced her own book of business. Great. Love it. Well, she grew her book so big, she couldn't keep up and still write. So I said, run a list and tell me who your bottom 10% of your clients are, because we took your advice. And she's like, Oh, but she's so sweet and I love talking to her. I'm like, okay, she has a renter's policy and a $500 auto. Do you need to service that? Well, no, I guess not, but she's so fun to talk to. I'm like, do you want to write a $20,000 account or do you want to talk to somebody for 20 minutes about their renter's policy? And so she, I mean, we kept them as clients. We just moved them to a different servicing agent. Yeah, I think, I just think you have to at least know who they are to make the judgment call because for everybody that's sweet and nice, you know, you have to identify if you don't have enough time in your day, what, what needs to happen. You're not right. going to be able to create more time in your day. Um, we kind of talked about eat the frog. I think eat the frog is doing the worst, hardest task um, out of your way. So agencies in my mind could use a category like frog. This is my frog right. for the day <laughs> or put that like that is your number one your high priority. High when priority, I, urgent, urgent. I got, yeah, urgent, urgent. I gotta, I gotta do this first thing in the morning because if not, if I keep putting it off, the day is just going to get me and I'm going to be sad about it at the end of the day. Right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about quoting over the phone and Stephen Harrington has been so kind as to do a separate meeting, which will be in our time management online school program of how you quote over the phone. So he's going to be the agent. I'm, we're going to roll reverse. I'm going to be the client because Stephen, like agents cannot get their head around this. Like, right. It's like, did you know, Kelly, if you have a multi-rater, you can import and export to and from Hawksoft, so you don't have to enter all the information twice. Or take a freaking quote sheet. <laughs> like, let's go get our quote sheet out to write it down, to type it in. And I, there's a, a couple things I just, the myths I'm gonna just smack across the face and Stephen will tell us a little bit about the logistics. Hopefully you buy our time management program, you can see it more in depth of how it works. But number one, people don't wanna be on the phone with us. Yes, if you are a wet towel and have no personality, you're 100% right. No one wants to be on the phone with you while you're doing this, okay? But people would rather get it done. And if you have questions, ask them up front. Would you like me to take care of this day on the phone or call you back? But mm -hmm. why should it be your choice? <laughs> should be up to the prospect, right? Number two, if you take a quote sheet, people need speed today. When are you going to enter it in if you keep taking phone calls? That thing is going to grow they moss. Pile and up. <laughs> yes. And then you take a quote sheet and we're all working collectively and you win the lottery at lunch. Where's that quote now? Nowhere where anybody can see it. Right. So I just want everybody to understand that. Yes, it might be mind blowing. And here's the last one I get, because this one always makes me giggle is, but then customers won't, will think that it's just like a fast quote. They won't think that I took all this time on it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think customers are like, he took 47 minutes. She took three days. <laughs> right. It's kind of like when I called my cell phone provider because I was having a problem with my phone. 
And they just kept, they're like, I'm going to put you on hold for a few minutes while I look into this. Okay, I'm back. It's going to be a few more minutes. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I would have been more excited by them going, okay, it's going to take me three and a half minutes. You're going to hear me talk to myself while I go through the system and push a bunch of keys. Da, 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 da. Feel free to chime in if you think I'm cute or funny, you know, and then just get it done while I'm on the phone. All you have to do is tell people what you're doing. Now I'm going to put your information in. Okay, we're starting to get some preliminary estimates back. Use your words wisely, right? <laughs> Even if you just took a starting point of direct entry into a personal lines raider and right. you were like, okay, bridging over gets a little wonky, ex fine, fine, but take that step. So it's in and we're good to go, but you can bridge over. So walk us through like Hawksoft wise, what your best practices are for just Hawksoft quoting over the phone. If it's an existing customer for a reshop, we try to export from the old policy into the multi raider get an indication of price. If it's nowhere near competitive with what they currently have, we're like, hey, the indicators coming back that the rate you have right now is amazing. Let's double check your discount. Mm -hmm. If it's not, then, I mean, if it's a new client, we go, we go into the multi-rater, we enter the information, we set up a shell for the client and hawks off, then we bridge most of the information back into a new tab. So, I mean, either way, it's, we try to only enter it once. It, to me, it doesn't make sense to create a tab in Hawksoft, enter all the information, bridge it over, try to get a rate, fill out more questions, bridge it right. back, when you can just go directly into the, the rater. And then... And, and for those of you who say, I only have two or three carriers, and I don't need a multi-rater, I, I say that is a lie. It's magical data fairies pushing out the information. It is. You and it's not, always, it's not always 100% accurate, but it gives you an indication. That's my favorite word, indication of price. Well, here's the thing. It's not accurate. No one ran a report yet. Right. <laughs> like, of course, it's we're, not accurate. We're still believing that they don't have a DUI and four speeding tickets. But I love doing that on the phone with the person. Like if you told me, oh no, I'm clean. I have no tickets or accidents. And I now bridge over and find out that you had two DUIs. Steven. I, I want to make sure this is accurate because we're coming back that you might have had a DUI this year. Do you recall that? Oh, oh yeah. No, yeah. Well, I didn't know that showed up. <laughs> but let's have that but conversation. It, like, But it's a lot better than giving them, like, you, you try to rush them off the phone and then you have to call back and you're like, um, oh, I'm so scared because I have to tell you that your husband has four tickets and you have two accidents and the rate's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I just think it's all about being able to hold the conversation. And then here's the thing. It's done. Right. And people I want to surprise the them versus answer. them surprise me. Yeah. People go with the first quote that meets their needs and then you, you close it. You'll get a yes. You don't have to send them a quote. There's not this back and forth. When people do it, they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But we have to get comfortable with it and we have to get comfortable with the technology. And the other pushback I get is, well, sometimes I'm using the technology and it doesn't save. And I'm like, well, how often? <laughs> how, how often? sometimes like like once a quarter once a month once one a out of 40 one out of a hundred because like if, if it's happening all the time like that's a problem that should right. be solved right but if you like well you know every now and again i'm like well that's good because 32 percent of our secret shoppers never get a quote so literally that's like one out of three so if it's one out of a hundred times that we're going to give someone a quote over that we, we miss up and we we don't, I think we're at, we're in a better place, right? right? So people just get your head around quoting over the phone, try it. Don't be scared. We will walk you through it in our, in our time management course. Um, all right. Next up is seasonality of the book. This is one of those things I love, love, love looking at because I don't think agencies look at this. They, the, you know, the summer's always crazy in an agency. I'm in a cold weather state. People don't buy houses in February because you can't see the lawn. You have no idea what's under the snow. And like, no one wants to go moving on ice, you know, and wind and cold, right? And so what ends up happening is everybody buys in the summer, the school system. So our busiest time, to use my least favorite word, is also the time when everyone's on vacation. And then we wonder why we're like having panic attacks in August because mm -hmm. for 12 weeks straight, you haven't had a full team and you're in your busiest season, right? 
So how can people, how can agencies look at, hey, what's renewing? What's our busy season? What's our slow season? So that they can make executive decisions around those timeframes. So I think the best thing to do is just, you can run a report of your whole book of business and then sort it by expiration date and, or by month, year. And it's going to show you like premiums renewing by month or number of policies renewing by month or any other field you want. You can also use some of the agency intelligence reports or the sales center in Hawksoft to get a quick peek of what's renewing in the next 90 days. You know, like you're gonna know, if, does that look high or does that look low once you start getting familiar with your numbers. And that is so critical because some agencies we work with are like, they're saying they're dying, it's busy season, it's busy season. I'm like, if there's a busy season, there's a slow season mm -hmm. and let's stack the deck during slow season, encourage people to take their time off during slow season, do your projects, the things you need to get caught up with in slow season and put some boundaries on busy season. Like it's not cool in an accounting firm to be taking two week long cruises during tax season. <laughs> right. I can't take the two first, the two first weeks of April off if I'm an accountant. <laughs> No, and I like I'm not saying be a stingy Scrooge McScrooge, but like think about it critically and think about your teams, you know. I, I love it, like high vacation season, then we close early on Fridays and everyone's crying. I'm like, people <laughs> run the seasonality in your book of business. You will learn so much. Um, so tell us a little bit now, Hawksoft. Someone's out emergency, sick for the day, or a planned vacation. What tools in Hawksoft do we have to do? Because we find a lot of agencies like don't reassign those suspenses, mm -hmm. right? Like somebody's out, it's like, well, we'll deal with whatever calls in and we'll throw up the out of office on their email, but the stuff they promise people, we keep, we're not, we're not, we don't go there. And I really fight saying somebody is sick. They don't deserve to come back to two days worth of work. Right. And we shouldn't be telling, I shouldn't say Stephen, my client, I'm going to send you this quote by Tuesday, but I'm sick. And you're like, what happened? That's a terrible customer experience. So someone's off in an agency randomly. What should we do in Hawksoft to still meet our client expectations? Uh, we, we tried a few different things. We tried a backup buddy, like everybody had a partner in crime. So when this one was gone, this one backed them up. That was cute uh, until they were both gone. Was, <laughs> I mean, was, it was, was cute. cute. <laughs> We've tried all kinds of different things. What we found easiest is the team lead or the CSR. One of the two, if the team lead's gone, the CSR does it. They go into their box, they go into their suspenses, they look at what's a priority or what really needs to happen for that day. If, it, if they're out sick, we're going to pretend like they're going to be gone the next day as well. We're just going to assume right. that, that for some reason they won't be back in 24 hours. So they go in and they look and they see what's really a priority and they reassign it one, two, three, four, five through the, to the other account managers. So that it's not creating strain on one person, it's being equally divided and you're not going to really, I mean, one extra task to come, you know, to, if you were sick, you would want to come back to a cleaner box. No doubt. You're, you're going to process that one extra change or reach out to that one client, knowing that that's going to happen for you as well. And my personality type, like if you tell me you're calling me on Tuesday and you don't, it's like you're dead to me. Like you right. made an egregious act of like disrespecting the fact that all, you, and if you couldn't, all you needed to do was say, hey, I'm still working. I'm like, cool. But right. like when I don't feel the love, I'm like. And if it's that complicated of an account, normally the, the team lead will call the person and be like, hey. Susan's out unexpectedly. <laughs> She's sick. Yes. You know, I'm happy to try to help out with this, but I'm going to need a lot more information from you that she probably has because she didn't put it in the system. Uh, you know, or is it okay if she calls you on Wednesday when we think she'll be back? And I'm totally cool as long as there is a scenario where there's a conversation, right? right. Like, but like just to tell a client we're doing this and I don't Didn't hear do it, nothing. That's it's, it's terrible. It's the definition right. of poor customer experience. So I love that. So we talked a little bit about this already, but working like a team. So things go crazy at, you know, cross insurance and somebody's getting slammed and what as a leader, cause you're a leader at the agency mm -hmm. as a coup, you know, like you get a sense for how the day is going, the phones are ringing, you know, it's full moon, it's all this stuff. Right. How do you kind of use Hawksoft to step in and say, all right, we're above our normal capacity. I'm going to work on organizing these 
the, the team because a lot of times they feel guilty. They're in the middle of it. They don't see that the volcano is about to explode. Tell us how you use Hawksoft to kind of say, all right, we're at critical mass. This is our game plan. So with Hawksoft has actually helped us make a lot of decisions with the agency. We, we developed a CSR team that literally answers the phone and does basic changes. Because the agents were always saying, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I process changes all day. All I do is, all day long is take payments and process changes. So we said, fine, we're going to stop taking payments. The CSRs are going to send them to the company if they call, and the CSRs will process the basic changes. And they're like, but those are my customers. I'm like, okay, they're so we just freed up your time. <laughs> you know, and then you free up their time, and then they find something else to keep themselves busy. But I mean, what it, each of our team leads reviews the suspenses with with everybody every other week so they have one on one every two weeks just to find out where they're at if things are getting crazy if they have stuff going on at home or if they need some additional assistance uh, but we can also see that in the reporting we can run activity reports for the day and see that somebody did 47 transactions and somebody did four i mean we can kind of see that balance right. and see and and four activities isn't bad if it was four large accounts that they're quoting that's great let me go in and do all your you know, little stuff for you so you can get those quotes done. Uh, but I mean, looking at the suspenses, what's current, what's behind, uh, looking at the activity logs, and then just looking at our, like, our phone system logs every call coming in. And we realized that 80% of our calls were never being answered. Mm -hmm. That was a problem for us. That yeah, wasn't a Hawksoft thing, but it helped us turn it into number matching and we were like okay the same customers are calling nine times because they don't leave a voicemail and we created other solutions around that so i think just seeing overall like what's happening is it changes is it quotes is it billing and running those weekly activity reports and then summarizing by activity type you're going to know absolutely so the next, you know, as we kind of wrap through here, I know I've taken a lot of your time, so, but this has been awesome. Um, Hawksoft is unique because it does allow for some integration. So what are some tech partners that you've partnered with to help keep things efficient and effective in the agency that are kind of tied into Hawksoft? We, uh, we use HubSpot for a lot of our marketing. It exports, the information exports out to HubSpot. It doesn't necessarily come back in. So, I mean, that's fine. We're doing very targeted campaigns for certain things. We can also run a list and put the notes back in if we want to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the major one we're using. Uh, we have Ring Central for our phone system, which we're hosted locally. So the screen pops don't quite work right, but it's nice to have the digital voicemail we drag and drop to the client file. It's amazing. It saves so much time versus typing it all back out. Are you using any texting software? Um, we Ring Central is our texting software, so we can text, fax, or phone all from the same number. So each agent has a direct line, then we have the main office number. Because we're seeing a lot, a lot of clients hear back from clients much faster via text message. Absolutely. Which again speeds you up. You close files faster. You close out items, and so we strongly encourage agencies to invest in some form of text messaging. Yes. Uh, we, we, at this point, are copying and pasting the text back into, into the management system, but there is, some, there is some texting software. Hawksoft has their own texting software that does integrate with the log notes. It just wasn't a good fit for the size of our agency with multiple locations. And then um, I know you're also, um, I, I, you mentioned earlier, like client portal. Are you mm -hmm. doing anything on that front with Hawksoft? Yeah. So we have agent app, which is, it's, they download an app called insurance agent app or agent app, something like that. It, and it links directly back into their Hawksoft account. So we are making sure that our records are up to date so that what they're seeing is correct but it allows them to see what's on their policy, the number of vehicles, the drivers, or some basic home information. It gives them their policy numbers. It also gives them a link back to our website, which is where a lot of our CSRs are pushing customers now for vehicle changes, because there was so many, nobody ever has the lien holder, right? They always had to call, I don't know who I finance it with, I'll call back next week. So, by pushing them back, they're like, okay, well, once you get all the information together, you can just submit it on our website. 
that then comes in through a web form and we just put it directly into their file and copy and paste it to the carrier to make the change. Awesome. Yeah, I think that technology is a way to go. I mean, there's so many different cool technology partners and it can make your head spin for sure. <laughs> but the idea is you keep saving minutes and minutes and minutes and it does add up. Um, right. So I want to kind of just wrap up by saying, I know Hawksoft has some really great features in it that other systems don't like hotkeys, things like that. I love hotkeys. <laughs> Could you give us like the top three things that you think, hey, if your agency isn't using this in Hawksoft, these are things you really should learn more about, maybe call you to learn more about, you know, so that that way we kind of leave with the like, hey, here's three things special to Hawksoft that really save time. I think, first of all, you need to slow down and take the time to learn the system. <laughs> and you're like, what? You want me to slow down for time management? The better you know the system, the more efficient you are at it, the less errors that happen, and the quicker you're going to get through screens. And let me ask you this, because like I, some people don't learn great through video or okay. you know, like they need more hands-on. Is that something that they can come to you to say, let's go through it together? You know, almost like the personal trainer experience. Like, I can watch... I can watch a YouTube video on a push-up, but right. <laughs> I kind of like it when someone's like telling me to go do it, if you know what right, I mean. Right, <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's coming up with the process that works for your agency, then teaching everybody to do it, monitoring it, and holding them accountable to it till it becomes habit. It's just well, like any of the programs. Accountability program. word. Accountability through reporting. What? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that absolutely is something that we do. Uh, the, the couple of other things, again, I believe in fully learning your system. Uh, but hotkeys, hotkeys, we came up with the top seven or eight things that the agents were doing daily. We learned that through the activity report. And there's these little buttons at the top of the screen that they just click and it like tears through most of the main screens to get directly to what they need to log in or what they need to put in. Uh, it just you streamlines. Like you, you know, you have control C to copy. It's kind of like that for your management system, right? Yeah, it's, it's, and you can make it do almost anything you want it to do. I think suspense categories, is number one priority. That is the biggest pet peeve I have when I look at other agencies is, we don't know what suspenses you have. Why do you have 400 suspenses? They could be very valid. I mean, it could be a great reason, but if there's no suspense category, we can't figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. And then I think the scratch pad, which we had already talked about as well, is a huge, huge time saver. The import export from the multi-rater. And then for people that are heavy in certs and commercial lines, Hawksoft actually has a product now for um, self-service certificates where you can go in and authorize the client to order their own certificate um, through a web portal. And they can, re they, they can submit a request for additional insured or for a new person to be added, it comes to you for approval. You click a box and it kicks it right back to them. Awesome. It also will allow them to allow uh, to email directly out to the certificate holders the certificate. So our magical truckers that at 3 a.m. need that certificate to get off the loading dock, <laughs> they're having to you know try to wake up one of our port agents in the middle of the night to teachable moment teachable. turn on their <laughs> to turn on their system into a certificate. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope our listeners out there, you can check out the show notes um, for how to get in touch with Stephen. Come to our website. He's one of our partners. If you do have seats in our online school, um, we have a whole time management course that we're launching. Um, we, we've had it, but with COVID, so many things have changed. We actually are just completely blowing it up and revamping it. Um, and so he's, uh, you know, this will be in there too. And maybe I can convince Steven to come up with like a cheat sheet of the top 10 things people should be doing to save time. Hint, hint, if you know what I mean after, but you've got big things going on. I don't want to give away your, your personal life secrets, but I know next weekend's a big weekend for you. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm sure you might see on Facebook where Steven's at. Um, I, this podcast <laughs> might come out after that, but um, if you could, see I, might, I may or may not have a hyphenated name after next weekend. <laughs> hyphenated names are the best. <laughs> I want to take after, after Kelly. Yes. And I have aliases and everything else. So I can get away easily from the FBI. <laughs> um, no, but I think that if we get, if I would love that, if you could help us out with that, just even like a Absolutely. PDF of just top reports that you think are good, things like that. Um, yep. So I appreciate you, Stephen, and helping all the Hawksoft agents out there understand how they can pick up time in their system. 
And any final thoughts for our, our listeners out there, Mr. Harrington? I can say that right now because Mr. Harrington, yes. Um <laughs> Find out what works for your agency. Set a procedure and make sure everybody's following it. Yes, it's a pain up front. It's a lot of work. But at the end, it makes your life so much easier. And if people aren't following it, call me. <laughs> if people aren't following it, call Kelly or find somebody that will follow it. Because, you know, it's your agency and you get to pick the processes and procedures that work best. So it's not an individual sport. If it's one of the largest time jams we see is everyone's documenting differently. Everybody's running files differently. And I, I hear that personally all the time. Well, they don't do it the way I do. And I'm like, everybody out of the pool. Okay. And, <laughs> like, and if, and if five people are doing it five different ways, it's hard to back each other or help each other because. And your reports are wrong and everything is a mess. There was a saying once I heard that's like garbage. It's not garbage in garbage out. It's garbage in garbage spreads. Right. And so think of it the fact that like if you're messy now is the best time to do it even if it seems overwhelming there's help out there to help walk you through it and when you have the data Stephen made a reference earlier you can make business decisions but when your mothership isn't right you are making feeling gut instinct feelings that are not going to ultimately serve your agency the best in the long run so absolutely well Stephen hugs and kisses from uh, east coast to west coast um, thank you so much. And for everybody else, hope you enjoyed our, our podcast. Yes, have a good day. I hope that you had a blast the last hour listening to Stephen and I talk about how to use our time management tips in conjunction with your management system. It's just a huge opportunity. Hawksoft has hug meetings. You can work with Stephen directly. You can use our time management trainings to get your team on board. But the bottom line is, as you've learned, everybody can't be doing different things. It all needs to go in the management system and leadership needs to understand the reports to run to make it work. When everybody's doing different things, that's where time goes away really, really quickly. We all think that if we had more hours, if we had more people, but the reality is sometimes it starts as an inside job. So I want to give a special thanks to the Diva of Insurance for joining us. And again, check out the resources that we have in the show notes if you want to get into contact with Stephen. Have a great day, everybody.